Conquering Mars But wouldn't it have been preferable to start with Phobos? Mars is already a fascinating planet, usually at the center of complicated historical and observational events, as well as conjectures bordering on science fiction. Could such a planet have regular moons and a typical history? No, obviously not. In truth, the red planet is located not enough the rest with the solar system's smallest, strangest, and most discussed moons. They were discussed even before their discovery, as their existence and almost exact distance from Mars was predicted by the Irish writer Jonathan Swift in 1726, 150 years before their actual discovery in 1877, thanks to the observational tenacity of the American astronomer Azaf Hall. Mysterious moons, since it is still unknown where they came from, despite the fact that they resemble two small asteroids and follow perfectly regular orbits, as if they were large moons like Ganymede or Titan. And now because of their enviable position, they are also involved in Mars conquering and exploration ambitions. In the near future, there are plans to visit them and bring back some soil to study, and in the distant future, there is talk of utilizing them as space stations permanently facing the secrets of Mars. But before we get into the intricacies, it's important to understand all of the aspects of these two great mini-worlds. What do you think? Shall we get started? Hello and welcome to Z. Subscribe the channel and ring the bell to stay updated. Dimensions In comparison to our moon, the Martian satellites are modest and do not surpass tens of kilometers in size. Diameter is impossible to discuss because both have a very irregular shape, requiring three values to define the proportions. Phobos is 27 by 22 by 19 kilometers in size, and its surface is littered with impact craters, the greatest of which has a diameter of 10 kilometers, more than a third of the entire satellite. Stigny was named after Hall's young wife, who pushed her husband to continue the research despite the initial poor results. The event that generated Stigny had to have been so violent that it threatened Phobos' very life and a sequence of lengthy steps that look like huge nails emerged from the crater to witness the impact's savagery. They were discovered in the 1970s by the Mariner and Viking expeditions, and their origin has long been debated. Some believe that Mars' violent impacts have rained a shower of debris capable of scratching the surface on the small moon, while others believe that Martian gravity has caused structural cracks on the satellite, and still others believe there is some connection with the impact that produced Stigny. And apparently, a recent simulation has given credence to the third hypothesis, demonstrating that following the devastating impact that formed Stigny, the tons of rock raised, as a result of the reduced gravity and small size of Phobos, have continued to roll, completing the full circle of the moon and returning to the starting point in some cases. A constant bouncing on the surface has generated those beautiful scars that make Phobos instantly recognizable. Deimos is likewise a roughly triaxial object. Its dimensions are 15 by 12 by 11 kilometers, and its surface appears smoother, despite the density of craters being similar to that of Phobos and the lunar plateaus. This is owing to the existence of a thick layer of regolith that fills certain craters almost completely. The creation of a concavity of roughly 10 kilometers in diameter, which is prevalent in the southern hemisphere, is also thought to be responsible for surface degradation. In actuality, the seismic energy released by the hit would have spread through the entire thing in the form of waves, forcing lesser structures to collapse. Density and Mass because of their little mass, Phobos and Deimos have very weak gravity, less than one thousandth of the gravity of Earth. Consider that a 70 kilogram individual would weigh only 40 grams on Phobos, and that getting away from the surface and lost in space would require an escape velocity of only 41 kilometers per hour. The density of the two satellites is quite low, 1.9 grams per cubic centimeter for Phobos and 1.5 grams for Deimos, although this is typical of most carbonaceous asteroids. In comparison, the Moon has a density of 3.3, Earth has a density of 5.5, and Mars has a density of 4.4. 
With such density, it is almost probable that the two moons cannot be fully solid. Their interior could be formed of a collection of very small particles gathered into big stony blocks with vast gaps between them. Orbit Surprisingly, the two moons sail in nearly circular orbits, barely slightly inclined to Mars' equatorial plane. Orbits that, as we will see later, we would expect from large moons, not two wandering asteroids snagged by coincidence by Mars' gravitational field. Phobos orbits the planet at a distance of 9,380 kilometers, whereas Deimos orbits the planet at a distance of 23,460 kilometers. Phobos completes one round of the planet in 7 hours and 39 minutes, implying that each Martian day, just over 24 hours, completes more than three revolutions of the planet. The most unique aspect of this small moon is that, because to its much shorter time of revolution than Mars rotation period, it appears to move backwards in the sky. As seen from the surface of Mars, Phobos appears as an object that rises in the west and crosses the sky fast, setting in the east three hours and ten minutes after rising. Deimos, on the other hand, moves much more slowly. It usually rises in the east and sets in the west, completing a full revolution in 30 hours and 18 minutes. The revolution of the two moons is synchronous. They always display the same face to Mars, with the primary axis of their figures pointing to the planet, much as the moon always shows the same face to Earth. Furthermore, due to their close proximity to the planet, Phobos and Deimos are not visible from all Martian regions. The polar regions are excluded. An observer must be between 69 degrees north and 69 degrees south latitude to see Phobos, and between 82 degrees north and 82 degrees south latitude to see Deimos. Origin and Formation the origins of Mars moons have always perplexed astronomers. Their irregular shape and small size have always suggested that they were two asteroids captured by the planet. However, their orbital parameters, orbits almost perfectly circular on Mars' equatorial plane and a rotation synchronous with the planet have led scientists to believe that they were formed by Mars colliding with a celestial body a thousand kilometers in diameter. However, one question remains, why did the impact result in the construction of two small moons rather than a single huge moon like ours or a ring of orbiting debris? Recent computer simulations revealed that the innermost component of the ring of debris initially comprised one or more huge moons, but disintegrated due to tidal forces generated by Mars's surrounding powerful gravitational field. Their ashes would have eventually landed on the planet. The smaller satellites would have suffered the same fate as will Phobos, whose orbit, which is now dangerously close to disintegration, narrows by around 2 centimeters each year. Nothing lasts forever, and regardless of their origin, we know the two satellites will not live long. Deimos is almost at the limit of its synchronous orbit and is drifting away from the surface of Mars very slowly, a tranquil and quiet death, in stark contrast to the more dramatic one that awaits Phobos. The largest of Mars' moons is doomed to collide with the planet. The tidal pressures are gradually increasing on the unhappy satellite, which will end up exceeding the so-called gross limit, which for Mars is around 5,470 kilometers away from the surface in a period of 20 to 40 million years. When the satellite reaches this point of no return, the difference in tidal pressures exerted on the face closest to the planet and the farthest from it will exceed its internal cohesion, causing it to explode into a thousand fragments. Although some huge fragments as many meteorites will fall on Mars, the majority of the debris will most likely contribute to the creation of a ring around the planet. Space Exploration Long before they vanish, the two small moons will have plenty of time to assist us in our exploration of Mars. Not even in a thousand years. In fact, the Japanese mission Martian Moons Exploration, or MMX, is scheduled to launch in 2024 with the goal of returning to Earth a sample of the substance that covers the surface of Phobos. A year after launch, MMX will enter Mars' orbit. 
it will eventually approach Phobos, entering what mission planners refer to as a quasi-orbit. While it appears that MMX is orbiting Phobos, it is actually orbiting Mars in a way that allows it to circle Phobos at the same time. This will be a difficult task because Phobos is deep within Mars' gravitational well and only 6,000 kilometers above the surface. MMX will spend a year examining Phobos with remote research instruments while looking for a safe and scientifically intriguing landing site. A wide-angle camera and laser mapping system will create a 3D map of the moon, while a narrow-angle camera will zoom in on select spots. Three spectrometers will be used to determine the mineral and elemental composition of Phobos' surface. A dust sensor will also scan for particles in orbit that have been knocked off Mars and Phobos by meteor strikes. The spacecraft also has two ultra-high-resolution video cameras that will provide breathtaking images of Mars and its moons. During the trip, some photographs will be broadcast to Earth, while the rest will be preserved in the sample return capsule for subsequent viewing. When MMX lands on Phobos, it will launch a small German and French-built rover based on the mascot, which Hayabusa 2 dropped to orbit asteroid Ryugu. The rover will spend at least 100 days exploring the surface of Phobos. We don't know what the surface of Phobos looks like. Is it stony, fluffy, or sandy? With two robotic arm-mounted drills that can dig 10 centimeters beneath the surface, MMX is ready for a variety of scenarios. MMX will lift off from Phobos and begin spiraling out of Martian orbit, passing Deimos multiple times on its way out to investigate and map the smaller moon. MMX will depart Mars in 2028, returning to Earth in 2029. The spaceship will launch a small capsule containing the samples, which will plunge through Earth's atmosphere and land safely for collection using a parachute. Future Space Stations If all goes well, the results of the MMX mission will be essential for the decision that we will have to make in the near future about whether or not to use the two satellites as permanent bases for distant study of Mars. As a human-operated outpost, Phobos has potential benefits over the Moon and Mars, at least in the early stages of real-time Mars exploration and future development. What's more, Phobos provides a fantastic vantage point versus Mars from which to undertake the aforementioned investigations and various mission operations. Reaching Phobos does not necessitate the costly building of a large propulsive or aerobraking lander, nor does it necessitate its transfer to lunar or Mars orbit. Phobos provides a feasible waypoint for locating an astrobiology laboratory capable of safely examining Mars samples with minimal risk of back contamination to Earth. The topography of Phobos, its close orbit to the Martian surface, and rotation with one side constantly facing Mars provide radiation shielding benefits. As a trade-off for not requiring a large, expensive lander, Phobos near microgravity will necessitate solutions and technologies to attach or adhere all pieces of the base to the Phobos surface. The Phobos mission will expose its human crew to space radiation that is not shielded by the Earth's magnetic field and is unaffected by any major atmosphere. One possible mitigation would be the shielding provided by Stigny Crater, Mars overhead, 25% of the viewable hemisphere above a point on Phobos' surface, and the mass of Phobos itself. The most important benefit of having an outpost so close to Mars, however, would be the ability to control the movement of the Martian rovers in real time, which is currently prevented by the distance Mars-Earth, which results in a communication delay of up to 40 minutes between the return of the signal. Even a decade ago, it was assumed that a human descent to Mars would be much easier if it began from a base on Phobos rather than from Earth. But now that the games are over, we'll try the direct landing method. However, there is a significant chance that humans may soon step foot on the Martian moons, which will then become our continual window onto the Red Planet. And in this regard, we must not forget a passage from Carl Sagan's famous book Cosmic Connection that never ceases to make us dream, sooner or later, it is only a matter of decades, on the surface of Phobos there will be instruments, and then men who will observe with terror and wonder the immense red planet filling the sky, from the horizon to the zenith. What do you think guys? 
Tell us in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon.